At my high school graduation, each student was asked to announce their plans for the future. I told everyone, I'm going to Nashville to become a star. The crowd laughed. It made me even more determined. Hi everyone, welcome to the Reading Den with Shen. And I am Shen. Today I'm going to read with you and your family an abridged version of a marvelous biography called I Am Dolly Parton, written by the outstanding Brad Meltzer, illustrated by the wonderful Christopher Eliopoulos. And today I want to give a special shout out to Manny from Nashville, Tennessee, USA. I am Dolly Parton. Once upon a time, on the coldest day of the year, in the foothills of the great Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee, a little girl was born in a one-room cabin. That girl was me. If that sounds like a fairy tale, you'll see my life sure does feel like one. We were so poor, my daddy paid Dr. Thomas with a sack of cornmeal. I like to joke I've been raking in the dough ever since. I was the fourth of 12 kids, a little firecracker, unafraid to wrestle with my brothers. Eventually, we moved to a two-room shack for all of us. Growing up, my mama read me stories from the Bible, which planted the seeds for my love of reading. One of my favorite books was this one, The Little Engine That Could. Books showed me there was a world beyond the Smoky Mountains. You see, to understand who I am, you need to understand where I'm from and also who I come from. My daddy taught me the value of hard work, but it was my mama's side that gave me the gift of music. Today, it's easy to find music on the TV or radio, but back then we didn't have electricity. Luckily, we did lots of singing in church. Some said my voice was weird. But I kept singing. Even before I could write, I was making up songs to stand out since Daddy didn't let us wear makeup. I put flour on my face and rouged my cheeks with poke berries. My first performances were on a porch with a tin can for a microphone. I'd sing to the kids I was babysitting. I'd sing to whatever animals I could find. Heck, I'd sing to dirt if no one was around. When I was 10 years old, my Uncle Bill got me my first radio performance. I looked for help, but I knew it was up to me. I sang as if I'd never have another chance. The crowd exploded, and unlike the kids I babysat, none of them crawled away. You never know where your dreams can take you. At 12 years old, Mon took me to an abandoned nearby church that I went to for some quiet time. Inside, I couldn't believe what I saw. It wasn't just the old piano. It was something else, something I could feel, like God was shining a light and wanted me to be me, like it was all right for me to dream, all right for me to see the world, and of course, all right for me to sing my songs. At 13, I got on a big interstate bus with my grandma. My uncle said if I could get to Lake Charles, Louisiana, I'd get my very own recording session. I'd never traveled like this. And boy, I love the adventure. That same year, I got to sing at the Grand Old Opry, where the most famous country music singers perform. A musician named Johnny Cash introduced me. I froze until a flashbulb went off. Then I smiled at the people in the balcony and let her rip. I got called back for three encores. At my high school graduation, each student was asked to announce their plans for the future. I told everyone, I'm going to Nashville to become a star. The crowd laughed. It made me even more determined. The very next morning, I was on a bus to Nashville. I had my dreams, an old guitar, and matching luggage. Three paper bags from the grocery store. Most important, I had my songs. I'd write songs everywhere, on napkins, torn paper, even on Kleenex boxes. Sometimes I'd write while on the bus. 
And sure, I wrote about love and heartbreak like other country singers, but I also wrote about things that were more personal. My music career felt like it was finally starting. That's exactly what happened. Instead of wearing what other people wanted me to wear, I put on flashy, colorful costumes that fit my personality. You just sold a million copies. Instead of just singing country songs, I started singing to all audiences. Instead of just being a music star, I was also in the movies, nine to five. I even started my own charity, Darley Parton's Imagination Library which promotes reading by giving away free books to kids like you. The first book we started with, The Little Engine That Could. Eventually, I opened my own amusement park. I wanted a place where people could dream and fantasize all they want. In every song, I sing, know what I'm really doing? Telling a story. Stories of everyday people, poor people, people who feel invisible or unseen. I write about women and men going through the hard parts of life. And the more I sing about triumphs and sorrows, the more people realize they aren't alone. At my concerts, you can find the old and young, rich and poor, gay and straight, city folk and country folk, black and white, and everyone else you can imagine. I love them all. I don't judge who people are as long as they're themselves. In my life, I came from humble beginnings, and that was just fine by me. I was never ashamed of it. It made me who I am. And it gave me the foundations of my life, my faith, my family, and my music. It's okay to be different. It's okay to feel unseen. Sometimes the world won't be cheering for you, but I will be. Whatever mountains get in your path, keep climbing. It's the only way to see what's on the other side. Did you know that Dolly has written around 3,000 songs? including I Will Always Love You, which hit number one for 14 weeks. She's won 10 Grammys and sold 100 million albums worldwide. Her Imagination Library has gifted over 185 million books to kids around the world. There's only one thing you got to be in life, yourself. Whatever you are, be authentically that. And the people who look, sound, or think different from you, love them for who they are too. Your dreams are worth dreaming. Your songs are worth singing. Your story is worth telling, just as it is. Be proud of who you are, and don't ever limit yourself. I am Darley Parton, and I see the light that shines within you. The end. I love this story. Let me know in a comment what you thought. To visit The Reading Den with Shen and find out about other fabulous books, please subscribe. Thanks for hanging out at The Reading Den with Shen. I'll see you all soon again. Bye, everybody.